Yankees. Yankees baseball on yes is brought to you in part by Charles Schwab. Why should market performance dictate your performance? Talk to Chuck, Charles Schwab. Kia Motors, Kia, the power to surprise. And by Continental Airlines, the official airline of the New York Yankees. Good look at Central Park as Manhattan's looking splendid on a Wednesday afternoon in New York City. And from Central Park to one of the greatest ballparks in the world, Yankee Stadium, we go to the ninth inning. And Chin Ming Wong's day is done. Mariano Rivera's day has just begun. It's a 2-2 game. And a typical game, despite the great performances by starting pitchers, usually comes down to the bullpen. Not a bad guy to have it come down to. You see his numbers. This is his 35th game of the year. And he's gotten his ERA under two. And the pitch to McCann is a strike. McCann, an RBI single his last time up, grounded to first in the second, grounded to short in the fourth. Bobby Cox might be looking out in that mound, and he's had some good relievers. They've had a decent bullpen, but can you imagine how things in the last 15 years would be different if Mariano was the Atlanta closer? I mean, they might have 10 World Series rings <laughs> winning the division every year because that's, you know, that's the one thing that's that's held them back is they've never really had that dominant closer until John Smoltz turned into a dominant closer. But, uh, well, they had to get to the World Series. They had Wallers, they had Rocker, and then they went to Smoltz. And in the 96 series, the first time the Braves got a look at Mariano Rivera when he was pitching the seventh and the eighth innings for the Yankees, their closer was Mark Wallers, and he gave up that famous home run in game four to Jim Lairitz that turned a 6 3 Atlanta lead into a 6 6 game. The Yankees ended up winning that game, the next game, and then game six. Well, when I hear you say that, Kitty, I, I, I think every team in baseball would love to have this man right here. Mariano Rivera makes the entire ball club better, certainly, if not only the back end, if he is the closer, whoever was the closer, you back them down to the seventh, eighth inning. I'm sure a lot of managers would love to have him. And the amazing thing about Rivera is that he'll occasionally blow a game, but usually it's on little dunkers, bleeders through the infield you very rarely see him really get pounded and you very rarely ever see him make you sweat in the innings that he pitches right back to Rivera one away This is probably the best hitter the Braves could match up against. And Mo uh, throws that cutter away. We've seen Frank Core with those long arms hit a couple pitches that were almost in the dirt. Frank Core with two ground balls to short, a single in the second inning. Count one and zero. That one's driven into right center. Johnny Damon can't get there. Played on a hop, so a base hit for Frank Cor. You almost have to have a good high fastball, about letter higher. This guy's going to get the, the barrel on it. That didn't get where Mo wanted it. Yeah, that ball didn't get inside, but if you saw that replay, it, it, it got on the end of Frank Cor's bat. And that's that late movement of that cutter of Mariano's where hitters see it, and then right at the very end, it's about three or four inches where it just cuts. Swing and a miss. 
which is you know what you were mentioning earlier Michael about Mariano you know doesn't seem like you know he's given up home runs and it's messy blown saves he throws strikes he doesn't walk people and he's got a pitch that is very difficult to square up it's so unique not many people if any has ever thrown a 96 mile hour cut fastball it's very difficult for batters to get the meat of the bat on it because of the late movement they see it in a certain area and by the time they commit it's moved. Count 0 and 2 on the roast. He is 0 for 3. Strike 3. The roast down looking. Yeah, and left hand hitters have been looking at this for years. That wasn't even his best run. But what a lot of left hand hitters that have seen him for the first time will mention, as Al did, is it's not just the cutter, but it's how hard he throws it. And with such little effort. There's Wilson Bediment. He is 0 for 3 with three ground balls. Ooh, look out. That one way, ball the other. And everybody okay. The, the one thing I'm surprised teams don't do more against him if they do get a base runner, because like more, most power pitchers, it takes them a little longer to unload the ball is, uh, is to try to steal. Like you said, you're, you're not going to beat him with very many... Uh, home runs and extra base hits it's probably a little dunk single like Luis Gonzalez got there's a little dunker up the middle Jeter Fields flips to first and Mariano with a scoreless ninth inning in relief of Chin Ming Wong no runs to hit no errors one man left Bottom of the ninth inning coming up. Yankees have a chance to win it. Let's see if they can do it. It'll be Posada, Damon, and Cabrera in the bottom of the ninth. Stay with us. And everybody that's a Yankee fan home happy. 2-2 game right now. And Posada will lead off against Chad Peranto. Jorge has a walk-off home run this year. That was against the Texas Rangers in that wild game. I think he's won that one 14-13. Posada pinch hit in the seventh inning, robbed of an RBI by Renteria. Deep to right, fair, it's gone! It's a foul ball. Second mistake a Braves reliever has made against a Yankee left-hand hitter late in the game. The one to Giambi and the uh, ball to Posada. Peranto left inside, hit it about 10 feet foul. Here's that walk-off home run by Posada. Count two and one. That was the one they were down nine nothing mm -hmm. in the first couple innings. The two one. Foul away. You know, we were talking about, Kitty, you, you were about how in these interleague games, you know, pitchers have an advantage when there's no history. And certainly, Chad Peranto, there's not a whole lot of history, if any. And it takes, even if you're just sitting on the bench, for guys to come back. And, you know, what does he have? Big sinker, you know, uh, Andy Phillips and Miguel Kairos seen what he has. There's another sinker down. He's got a, a lot of movement, late movement on that sinker. He doesn't throw quite as hard as Wong. 
Well, obviously he's made some improvement from his days with the Orioles and the Indians. And here's the mistake pitch. They wanted it away and he left it right in Jorge's zone. Just pulled it foul. Like a splitter or a slider. Good movement on that one. And on that one. Well, he has struck out all three Yankees he's faced. Here's Johnny Damon. And the count is 1 0. One and one. Well, you see him uh, trying to keep that ball in the outside corner, and a lot of times the mindset in these games, you go up to the plate and everybody wants to end it with a walk-off home run. And, but oftentimes your best shot is hitting it the other way. Popped up the other way. Renteria giving chase, and he makes the play. They say it would have been a fair ball, so that's how you score it, and they're two-way. Yankees are one out away from extra innings. Quick look at the stand. See how much room he's got. He's got plenty. Puts it away. Here's Melky Cabrera. Hit a home run in the ninth inning yesterday. Too little too late though for the Yankees. They lost five to two. He's one for four today. Had a big opportunity in the seventh inning. Runners on first and third with two outs, but he struck out. Here's his home run yesterday against Jorge Sosa. His first major league home run as a left-handed batter. So he has two home runs, one from each side. And the 1-1. One -one. Yankees today have not capitalized on the opportunities that have presented themselves. They are 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position. And Giambi with a home run. And Alex Rodriguez actually grounded out 1-4-3 to drive in a run. So that's how they've gotten the two runs without getting a base hit with runners in scoring position. Now this is a dangerous proposition for Peranto. He's 3-1 on Cabrera and that man's on deck. The Braves want to see Derek Jeter up in the 10th inning, not here in the bottom of the ninth. And they'll see him up here in the bottom of the ninth inning as Cabrera works a walk. Well, this will be Peranto's last batter. They got McBride warming up, and Villarreal, who has become their long man, will, will pitch the Braves into uh, the latter part of these innings if it goes deep. 2 2 game. Here's Jeter. Jeter is one for four. The double came in the first inning. Cabrera goes, pitches inside, throw to second. Not in time, a big stolen base by Cabrera. He steals his way into scoring position. That's what's been lacking uh, lately is hit and run, running game. Melky with a good jump, quick peek. In there easily. So from needing an extra base hit, now the Yankees could be a base hit away from winning this game. Three good arms in the outfield for the Braves. Jeter a 400 hitter in these situations. Two outs and runners in scoring position. And now they are going to intentionally walk Jeter with 2-0 they don't want to mess. Wow. And they're going to face Jason Giambi. And it won't be Peranto who faces him. It'll be McBride in all likelihood. I, I think Bobby Cox has uh, seen enough postseason action to see how many big hits Jer Derek Jeter has gotten. So he said, we'll go lefty-lefty. 
That is uh, probably the ultimate respect right there if they walk you to get to Giambi, even though it is a left-hander coming in. Well, Bobby Costco is the only left-hander he has in the bullpen. McKay McBride against Giambi. Game on the line when we get back. So there's nothing like being up there, but at least Giambi has an idea as he comes to the plate. And the uh, percentage that the Yankees have is look at Jason Ty in the game, getting an inside fastball to pull here is. Uh, McBride has held left-hand hitters down, but he's walked a lot of them. Game on the line. The winning run is at second base. Jeter's at first. Cabrera at second. See McBride's numbers. And there's a strike. When McBride was in high school in Georgia, he got a phone call from Billy Wagner who told him, don't let people tell you that you're too short. You go out there and you pitch, because Billy Wagner is not very big either. McBride's 5'11", and he's made it to the big leagues. Driven into center field. Andrew Jones right there, so Giambi hit it right on the screws, but right at Andrew Jones. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two men left on base. Bonus Cantos, free baseball coming up as we go to the 10th. Bobby Cox trying to win a series. His team's trying to play catch up in the National League East. They've gotten off to an awful start. And it'll be Ryan Langerhans against Mariano Rivera. It'll be 9 1 and 2. Langerhans, Giles, and Renteria against Rivera. Tries to drag bunt. That doesn't happen. Count 0 and 1. And I know in the Yankee dugout right now, there's some conversation about guys saying it's going to turn around pretty quick. Because if you look at this game, Posada hit a bullet that Renteria made a great play on. That gives them the lead. Giambi hit that one. <laughs> and they, they just haven't been able to get those hits at the right time to fall in. If you're uh, Posada and Giambi, it both had good at bats, hit the ball hard. And the Yankees 0 for 10 today with runners in scoring position. But as Jim said, they have hit the ball hard a couple of times. The Posada line drive, the Giambi line drive, the hot shot up the middle by A-Rod, all hit hard, but all considered outs and all were outs. The one-two. And teams go through periods of time like that. I don't care if you're a good hitting team, poor hitting team, and then all of a sudden a couple ground balls find the hole and a bloop here and a blast, and then everything goes in the right direction. Could not hold up on the cutter bearing in on the hands and Langerhans down on strikes. Boy, that is uh, that is about as good a look and as good a cutter. <laughs> Wants to hold up, but you've got to commit so quickly because it's in the mid 90s. Pitch to Giles is upstairs. One and zero. Oh. Tries to tie him up too far inside the count 2 0. And the count goes 3 0. You know, Moe's strength is that cutter that runs away from the righty or in on the lefty. But you see Marcus Giles, the way he's diving out over, he's a guy that likes the ball away. So those three cutters were. Inside. And that one missed just off the plate. And Giles walks on four pitches. Very rare for Rivera to issue a four pitch walk. And he's not in love with the call, it seems like. The shortstop. Falls right down the middle. Wow. Randy having a 
for a veteran umpire, kind of a tough game back there. A lot of strikes called balls, a lot of balls called strikes. <laughs> Looked like he started to say, you've got to be kidding me, but yeah. put his glove up in front of his face. Here's Edgar Renteria. He's one for four. Pitch out, nothing doing. That six balls out of the strike zone. Might be a first. And Alex Rodriguez goes over just to slow down Rivera just a bit. Tomorrow's an off day, so Joe Torrey and Ron Guidry not worried about Rivera pitching two innings here. He can recharge tomorrow. Runner goes, pitches high, throw to second. Is in time. They nail Marcus Giles. Good throw by Posada and the tag by Cairo. Wow, that's a pretty big break for the Yankees. I mean, that is the seventh consecutive pitch out of the strike zone. And we'll look at the low jack caught stealing. I mean, he thinks it's a hit and run. Because he, he slowed up to pick up the flight of the ball. Renteria didn't think so. And that's why they got him by a pretty good margin. I think Bobby Cox is looking at like, what's going on here? That's the second time the series that Renteria was up and we thought that it was a hit and run and it wasn't. And each time the runner got gunned down. Cairo had the bag blocked. The hand actually touched the foot before it touched the bag. And the count three and two. Chipper Jones on deck. Yankees would rather avoid him. Just stayed alive. Three, two, foul back. Most thrown 30 pitches, 20 strikes. A long outing for him, second inning of work. Pitched on Monday, was off yesterday. The 3 2. Renteria battling. Two runs on eight hits for the Braves. Two runs on seven hits for the Yankees. The 3 2. Again, foul back. And Mo must be throwing hard because that ball got into the, the press box. And that's kind of reset from the upper deck. You really have to foul back a hard fastball to get it in there. 3-2. Tap slowly towards second. Cairo. And that'll do it here in the 10th. No runs, no hits, no errors. And because of the caught stealing, nobody left on base. Yankees have another opportunity to win it in the bottom of the 10th inning. It's a 2-2 game. Shooting baseball here at Yankee Stadium. Bottom of the 10th inning. Yankees and the Braves are tied at two. And the Yankees have had some opportunities to get some big hits. We told you there. Hitless in 10 at bats with runners in scoring position, but a couple of them right on the screws. That's the great play by Renteria off the uh, bat of Posada. And then this was last inning. Giambi centered it, but right at. Holtz left his last start with that groin injury. Formerly with the Diamondbacks. Here's Alex Rodriguez. If there was a player that needed a big hit, a walk-off hit, it would be Alex Rodriguez. 
And he gets a chance here on the bottom of the 10th inning to lead off against the Braves right hander. Actually that's the mindset sometimes but I think what Alex would like to do is just hit the ball hard the opposite way and pick up any kind of hit. Rodriguez one for three with a walk and a ribby. Foul back. And if you go up there thinking home run I haven't hit that much but I've hit enough. If you think home run you seldom get one but if you just think I'm going up there hit the ball hard get the inning started uh, then good things happen. Outside in the count one and one. While the Braves carry seven relievers. And now they have used five of them. Check that four of them. They still have Kevin Barry, Sosa, and Yates remaining. Barry pitched three innings on Monday. Smolt started. Then Ray, Peranto, McBride, and now Villarreal. Chopped to second base. Giles, one away. See, that, that's what's a frustrating at bat for a great player like Alex because he literally got beat by the pitcher. I mean, he didn't he didn't center up that pitch. The pitch before, pretty good one to hit, fouled straight back, and then he he got beat right in on the hands. Well, he ends up getting in a bad count, one-two count. That was a backup slider that stayed inside. Looks like Farnsworth will get the 11th if they need it. Swing and a foul tip by Bernie. Bernie today 0 for 3 with a walk. And the count one and one. The Braves are four and two in extra inning games. The Yankees four and one. Yankees 0 and one here at home in extra innings and four and zero on the road. Count one and two. Under Bobby Cox, the Braves have had a number of closers. Rietzma, Smoltz, Rocker, Kerry Leitenberg, Mark Wars, Greg McMichael, Mike Stanton, Alejandro Pena, and Juan Berenguer. And because of that uncertainty out of the pen, that could be one of the reasons they have just one World Series title despite 14 division titles. And you forgot Jeff Ridden. He was there for a short time. Was he there with yep. Cox? Yeah, I think he was. Pedrosian? I think that was before Bobby yeah. Cox. The 2-2. Two -two. Just missed inside. The count full at 3-2. and two. Looks like Villarreal, not really a, a power pitcher, but has got a lot of late movement on his pitches. Andy Phillips on deck. Away. Best fastball he's thrown. Bernie fought it off. He's got a little of Gaylord Perry's mannerisms on the mound. Of course, Gaylord known for loading up the ball, maybe with a little Vaseline. But why? He's going to his wrist, not his cap. Back to his wrist. 
Bobby Mercer's having flashbacks. Yep. Bobby hated facing Gaylord Perry. I remember the Yankees and the Indians were on Monday Night Baseball one time. It was uh, maybe in the early 70s, mid 70s, and Bobby was so obsessed with Gaylord Perry that the ABC crew had like eight cameras on him on the mound to try to catch him throwing a splitter. Well, the technology we have today, they can catch it. Three, two. And Bernie walks. So the winning run is on base. Good at bat. That's what the Yankees have been looking for. A good patient at bat. Bernie fouled off a couple tough pitches. Took a close one. And uh, Joe Torre will go to his bench and get a little more speed. Bubba Crosby will run for Bernie. So Bernie gets congratulations on a good at bat. And Bubba Crosby, do they send him? Do they move him? Andy Phillips at the plate. Grounded into the hole. Renteria goes to Giles and they get the force. That's a nice play by the Brave shortstop. He's not playing shortstop like a guy who made 30 some errors for the Red Sox and uh, deep in the hole only one chance and even with Bubba's speed he gets him at second. Here's Miguel Cairo. Two two game we're in the bottom of the tenth inning. Driven to center field. Andrew Jones is there. And that'll do it. The Yankees no runs no hits no errors and one man left. They clear the scoreboard in left center field. No numbers there except two two. We move to the eleven. Well, we go to the 11th inning here at the stadium. The Braves and the Yankees are tied at two. And they are going to face a new Yankee pitcher. And it's the heart of the Braves order that's going to face Kyle Farnsworth. And there you see Kyle Farnsworth's numbers. 37 games, two and four. Pretty high ERA. Those walks to innings, I think that's something that he's looking at and wanting to keep those walks down get ahead and expand with his slider Kyle pitched yesterday in the ninth inning ran into trouble Joe Torrey took him out in the middle of the inning with 20 pitches because he wanted to be able to use him today and here he is against Chipper Jones and Farnsworth has the first pitch fouled off First 16 games of the year, Farnsworth, not bad, 1 and 0, 3.07. But check out the last 21, 1 and 4, with a 6.41. And if any pitcher needed a clean inning, it's Kyle Farnsworth because the stuff is there. You know, mentally, he hasn't put his arms around effectiveness at this point. Nice play there by Andy Phillips. Hot shot down the line. Phillips guarding the line against the extra base hit. Loves it and beats Jones to the bag. Boy, if he played first every day, he's playing it like a gold glover. I mean, he is not getting any easy plays there. That, again, was one of those irregular hops. It's almost past him. And uh, keeps the glove open. Wins the race to the bag. Here's Andrew Jones, who just uses one eye black under the left eye. Doesn't have it under the right eye. And there's a strike. He has the the stick on eye black, so maybe one just fell off. 
Andrew left eye Jones. Count on two. There's that slider. When, when he uses that slider and it really, really has that downward tilt, it's an effective pitch mixed in with his 97, 98 mile an hour fastball. But he leaves it out over the plate a lot as well. The 0 2. Grounded to Alex Rodriguez. Throw pulls Phillips off the bag, but a swipe tag. Two way. Phillips has saved Jeter an error and just saved A Rod an error. Sometimes that's the uh, when infielders do make errant throws, they have so much time they don't really put as much on. Alex makes his best throws when he has to go back behind the bag and really gets a chance to use his arm. So Phillips with two nice plays in this inning. Here's Brian McCann. You see Farnsworth and Posada. They um, they got a little heated yesterday on the mound. Farnsworth turned his back on Posada. Posada walked away from a conference on the mound that Ron Guidry was in. You could see that Posada was a little disgusted with him. He crossed him up, Farnsworth did, and after that, there was a, a wee bit of animosity there. And Farnsworth turns his back, which Posada doesn't like, and then Posada <laughs> says, see ya. And the count 2-0. and oh. Usually that kind of stuff doesn't spill out in public. You might have those conversations in the dugout or up the runway. Well, they were a little chapped at each other. Broken bat, and that's going to be a base hit down the right field line. Bubba Crosby will field, and he's going to hold Brian McCann to a single. Yeah, and, and they're going to get. I mean, I don't know if Brian McCann is uh, just is not a good runner. His legs are bothering him. They're taking him out for more speed right now. The catcher. Yeah. Heavy legged. Broke the bat. Oh, he's a little trouble getting started. Fell back first before he even started to run and then gets there. Pete Orr, utility infielder, will go in to run for him. And he can run. And you can run on Farnsworth because he has that high leg kick. Big guy, throws hard. Here's Jeff Francoeur. There's that slider. Boy, when you're geared up for the fastball, that's a good pitch. We're in the top of the 11th, a 2-2 game. Or dives back. Getting a pretty good lead. Lined off the glove of A-Rod, and that'll trickle into left field. We'll see how they score it. And the crowd with a murmur of boos. Well, when it's hit that hard, it's usually scored a hit. And it was hit hard, but, you know, most infielders will tell you if it's off the ground, they can't, sometimes they just don't pick it up quite as uh, quickly out of the stands. But. Now Joe Torrey's going to go to the bullpen with the... Uh, the go-ahead run in scoring position, and the lefty LaRoche do up. He's going to go to Mike Myers. That has been scored a base hit. So Farnsworth had a clean inning going, but then successive singles. Myers against LaRoche when we get back. This is a rare instance. Uh, well, Matt Diaz is pitch yeah. hitting for the right, lefty. Where, where he'll have to stay in and pitch to a right-hander. LaRoche was 0 for 4. 
Diaz a 229 hitter with runners in scoring position. Now last last year Myers was awful against righties. He's, he's doing okay this year against them. Yeah, you know, even if it's lefty against righty, if you're Matt Diaz, you got one crack at a motion like this. It is so hard to to pick it up. 2-2 game. The go-ahead run at second. Runners on first and second with two outs. Count 0 and 2. A one two tried to get hit with that didn't look like he was really bailing in the count two and two Wilson Betamitz on deck yeah, it looked like he was going to take one for the team <laughs> just missed yeah and that that pitch there is the reason why Myers has pitched so well against right handers in his career he hasn't done nearly as well this year 167 right handers are batting against him Predominantly a guy who comes in to just get lefties, but he's been really boring in his fastball on the inside part of the plate. As you saw Diaz dive out over looking for that backdoor slider. 2-2. Two, two. That one did hit him. Almost looked like that was his plan. Wasn't exactly bailing out of the way. Now the bases are loaded. And Joe Torrey is going to go to the bullpen again. Yeah, it looked like that, like a frisbee slider from underneath and just keeps breaking in and hits Matt Diaz right in the midsection. So the danger in playing matchup like this is that you're using pitchers and you're in an extra inning game. You don't know how long it's going to go. So Joe Torrey goes to the bullpen. Bases loaded with Braves are on the top of the 11th. Baseball. You get a first-hand look at the minor league version of this weekend's upcoming Subway Series. The Mets AAA farm team, the Norfolk Tides, take on the Yankees' own Columbus Clippers at Cooper Stadium in Ohio. That's right. Catch all the excitement starting tomorrow at 7 right here on Yes. Well, the Yankees go to Scott Proctor now to try to get out of a bases-loaded two-out jam. And you see Proctor's numbers. This is his 38th game, and he's pitched in 48 innings. And he will face Wilson Betamit with the bases loaded. 2 2 game. Popped him up. One pitch, and Proctor will get out of it. Jeter is there. And that'll do it. Good job by Proctor. For the Yankees, no runs a hit. One big error, and the bases are left loaded. Yankees have another chance to win it in the bottom of the 11th. It's 2 2. Trying to pull out this series. This is the rubber game. The Yankees won the first game. The Braves won last night. It'll be Posada, Damon, and Cabrera against Oscar Villarreal. And the count, 1-0.
There's a strike. Second inning of work for the Braves right-hander. Count one and two. Or he pulled off that ball. I was just thinking between innings, it's no wonder players get in the mindset of let, let me hit a walk-off home run because they play about six highlights between innings. And that's, they never see, you never see a walk-off walker single. It's all home runs. So in a player's mind, let me go up there and add myself to that list. And Posada swings and misses for the first out of the bottom of the 11th. Via Real with a, with a lot of movement. Occasionally he's gotten one up in the mid 90s, but a lot of late movement. Braves got Via Real from the Diamondbacks, along with Cormier for Johnny Estrada, the catcher. That was during uh, this past offseason. Count one and zero to Damon. Damon is 0 for four today with a walk. Braves about hit the Yankees, but it's a 2-2 game. Bo 1 0. Hit sharply to second. Giles to Thorman. Two away. Well, I always thought that too, Kitty. When you you see these long extra inning games, and it, I don't I don't know if hitters feel that way, but I don't know whether they want to be the hero in a one one swing home run. But it does seem like yeah, guys start trying to go yard ball. That that, had, that was an example of it. I, I was kind of looking for Johnny Damon with one of those Fenway, approach, you know, try to hit it the other way, get on base, steal a base. Can a pitcher play against that aggression? Well, yeah, I mean, I think one of the things as a pitcher you're trying to guard against is, is the walk-off home run. So, you know, as, as you see with Villarreal, he's got a lot more, more movement on your pitches. And usually, you know, the toughest, uh, the toughest approach from a pitcher standpoint is a guy that will go up there and wait for the ball to come to him and hit it the other way. Melky walked in the ninth inning with two outs. There's a fly ball to right field. Frank Poor is there in a 1-2-3 inning for Villarreal and the Braves. So the Yankees go down in order, and we go to the 12th inning. It's a 2-2 game here at the stadium. He's turned it over to Mariano Rivera, two scoreless. Then last inning, Farnsworth, Myers, and Proctor came on with the bases loaded in two outs to pop up Wilson Bedemit for the final out of the 11th. So we go to the 12th. And Ryan Langerhans will lead off against Proctor. Pitch is high. And there's a strike. If you're keeping score at home and you have to rearrange your batting order. Thorman is going to bat the five hole. Pratt is in the seven hole. So the count two and one on Langerhans. The two one. The count three and one. And on deck is Marcus Giles. Oh. Popped up and out of play on the first base side. The lights are on here at the stadium, starting to get somewhat overcast.
It was a sellout crowd. A lot of them have decided to head home. Ron Ballone beginning to throw in the bullpen. The 3 2. High fly ball. Right center. Bubba Crosby and Damon. Damon with the call on the catch. One away. Well, the last four outs now have been either strikeout or the hitter has pulled the ball. And uh, be interesting here in extra innings to see who is the first hitter that tries to go the opposite way. They probably all have sports centeritis. They know the single or right's not going to get them on sports center. Although Marcus Giles hits an awful lot of balls the opposite way. Pitches outside, 1 0. That is his approach, his swing. Dives a little bit, looks for the ball out over, and goes right center. And the count one and one. <laughs> it didn't <laughs> look like a right center <laughs> swing. No, 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 that looked like maybe just to the right of the center of the visiting <laughs> bullpen. <laughs> Count two and one. And the two one pitch. Two and two. <laughs> Another big trying to dial eight long distance. Another big swing. Check swing. Did he go? No, said Angel Hernandez. So now the count is full. Let's take a look at that. Borderline. Of course, as pitchers, we feel anytime the bat comes off a hitter's shoulder, it's a strike. <laughs> and the 3 2. Out. Foul back. Seeing these big swings, that uh, was such an advantage. That we had in the 1982 Cardinal team because you got guys like Willie McGee and Ozzy Smith and Tommy Hearn and Lonnie Smith. You know, and that's how you win those games. You just get a single, bunt a guy over, or hit and run, or say you win more games like that than you do with walk off home runs. Driven deep to left field, going back Cabrera on the track at the wall. See ya. He does get the home run. He pulls it into the seats and left, and the Braves take a 3-2 to two lead. Guess he changed his approach. <laughs> <laughs> That's his fifth home run of the year, and his first hit of the day. And he's pumped. Yet three big swings. Missed the first two. Renteria fouls it back. See, Posada's target, and uh, similar to the home run Giambi hit late in the game, because guys are, are geared up like that for home runs, you, you don't get by with those pitches inside as often, unless they're way inside. And the count quickly 0 and 2. So now the Yankees. Have to play catch up in the bottom of the 12th inning, and they've got the batters coming up that they want Jeter, Giambi, and A Rod. Probably look at the uh, <clears throat> Braves' new closers since they've used uh, Jorge Sosa in a closer role. Popped up, shallow right center, Damon, two outs. And that'll bring up Chipper Jones against Proctor. That pitcher's theory for years of tight games late. A mistake outside, you know, a little bit up might be a single or a double, but a mistake inside, you're rubbing up a new one. Count 1-0. Oh. Like you saw on that pitch, Posada was setting up a way. That ball just came back over the middle. He was trying to go away. Oh, oh, oh. 
and the count 2 and 0. Oh. Marcus Giles still talking about it. He heard you talk about the Sports Center. He was, He's on. Yep. Flashed all those walk-off home runs between innings. Wants him to show that at Turner Field. Driven to right center field. Giving chases. Johnny Damon, he can't get there. It'll go to the wall. And Chipper Jones with his third base hit today. A two-out double. He should do the I Love New York campaigns. Yeah. Pretty good pitch. Two fastballs high in the zone. He comes back with that changeup down and away. And Chipper, like a lot of left-hand hitters, they don't miss too many low pitches. They will intentionally walk Andrew Jones. And they'll deal with Foreman. You talk about big swingers. I was talking to some of the Braves the other day because Thorman was just called up, and we've seen how aggressive Frank Cor is. They think that Thorman might swing harder. He was putting up some big power numbers as well as hitting well for average in uh, Richmond before he got called up. It's like Terry Pendleton giving him uh, a little idea what Proctor throws, like Don Mattingly does to the Yankee hitters. But he's not going to see Proctor. And Joe Torrey is going to bring in Ballone. So Proctor got out of the bases loaded jam with one pitch in the 11th inning. Will now turn it over to Ron Ballone. First and second two outs and Ballone against Thorman. When we get back Yankees trail 3-2 in the 12th. Well, Scott Proctor will watch this from the outfield side of the Yankee dugout right next to the cooler, the Paul O'Neill cooler, as they turn it over to Ron Ballone. And they're asking Ballone in his 32nd game to get out Thorman. Ballone gave up a home run yesterday to a left-hander, LaRoche. Rip just foul. I noticed in his warm up tosses uh, at least one. Maybe he's talking to Mike Myers. He kind of dropped down side on him. Which you going back to Mike Myers for, uh, you know, a lot of fans that haven't watched a lot of Yankee baseball. I see that motion. He, he got it from Hall of Famer Al Kaline at the Tigers. Mike was with the Tigers organization. Conventional pitcher, not doing well. And Al Kaline said, You want to know how to get left handers out? Drop down. That's when he started it. And the 0-1. Upstairs in the count one and one. We're in the top of the 12th inning here at the stadium. A 3-2 Braves lead. It was a, a very nice pitcher's duel between John Smoltz and Chin Ming Wong. And the bullpen turned it into a 2-2 game. Outside in the count two and one. Smoltz won seven strong. Jin Ming Wang won eight. Yankees tied the game on a Jason Giambi home run in the eighth inning. And that one off the glove of Posada, and the two runners move up. And by using. Uh Almost everyone in the bullpen now Valone is one pitch away when you saw his record he's like uh, Farnsworth and Proctor the high walk total he'll have to face uh, looks like Frank Cor on deck with the bases loaded they score that a wild pitch two outs runners on second and third. And he walks him. And for the second straight inning, the Braves have the bases loaded. And now he's forced to throw strikes, although you like your chances against Frank Corr, who you know, is very difficult to walk. You won't have to worry about walking him, but what Frank Corr is, is shown in this series that anything down, whether it's a foot inside, outside, anything from like thigh down, he puts the barrel on. 
Best matchup it gives Tim. Looks like you better have a good high fastball. Bases loaded with Braves. Lined right at Jeter. So Frank Poor jumped on the first pitch. Hit it hard, but hit it right at the Yankee shortstop and captain. The Braves take the lead on the Marcus Giles home run. They're up 3-2. to two. Bottom of the 12th inning coming up. It'll be Jeter, Giambi, and A-Rod. Team with four walks, Giambi four for 12, and A-Rod is five for 13. So the numbers favor the Yankees here. And we'll see how they do here in the bottom of the 12th. Three, two Braves. Braves trying to win the series two games to one. Jeter one for four with an intentional walk. Grounded up the middle. Renteria does the 360 fires. And he gets Jeter. And Renteria, who, who made 30 errors last yeah. year for the Red Sox, is having a, a very good series defensively. Yeah, if they're watching this game in Boston, they're saying, who are this is the real Edgar Renteria. I and mean, he takes a hit away from Derek right there. Nice spin and an accurate throw. I was talking with some of the Braves people, and they said, Here's Jeter's reaction to a great play that he's watching from his counterpart, Renteria, saying many of his errors were as a result of throws. And uh, certainly nothing against uh, the first baseman from Boston who's in Baltimore now. Kevin Millar. Kevin Millar, but he wasn't as uh, nearly as helpful as what Andy Phillips has shown today. So Giambi, who lined out sharply to Andrew Jones in the ninth inning, after Derek Jeter was intentionally walked in front of him, he has a 1-1 count now. And the count is 2-1. and one. And Alex Rodriguez is on deck. Fights it off and fouls it back. Right in on the hands of Giambi. The count two and two. Giambi two home runs in the Yankees 5-2 victory on Monday. And today he has a home run that tied the game at two. Foul back. Sosa throwing hard, 96 miles an hour. Yeah, and other than the one that Jason fouled off, which Sosa just tugged a little, threw it inside, not on purpose. He is, uh, he's throwing hard and near the outside part of the plate, trying to make Giambi go the other way, keep him from pulling it. The 2-2, two -two. the upstairs, 3-2. Giambi with that good eye, just wants to get on. And the 3 2. Foul back. Sosa wanted that one. Staring in as if to say, where was that? And the tying run is on first. Well, let's see where it was. It uh, looked like Todd Pratt had to reach outside for it, tried to tug it in. And it was clearly outside. Now, a lot has been made of Alex's inability to hit in these situations. And this is the reason, one of the reasons why, is he faces guys that have 
gas in the high 90s and throw it. And that's the toughest pitch for him to catch up with. He's done well against Sosa, so he's got enough history to against him to know what he's probably going to get. Kevin Reese pinch running for Giambi. And Sosa steps off. You just look for one of these at bats for Alex to say I'm tired of these fastballs in on my kitchen. I'm going to cheat and just try to rip one down the left field line. See if he can get the pitchers to keep from coming in there. Upstairs with the fastball 1 and 0. Throwing Sosa is in the count 2 0. Well, that was his history in Tampa Bay. He had a, a good year as a starter last year, and he obviously has a good arm, but in Tampa Bay, he was guilty of the same thing. He throws it in the mid 90s, but it's like he's trying to throw it in the low hundreds. Paints the outside corner with a 95 mile an hour fastball to count two and one. Well, as good as he was, Sosa last year, he started and relieved. 20 starts, 44 games. He's 13 and three this year. He was a complete opposite. He's one and eight with a 5.53 ERA and 13 starts. And they just thought it, he's much more suited for one inning. Tries to go slider, pitches outside, and the count now three and one. Yankees today one for 16 with runners on base. A rods one for four an RBI and a walk. Kevin Reese leads off first. Pinch running for Giambi. One out. And the three one. High drive left field. Going back Langerhans looking up. See ya! Alex Rodriguez comes through. A walk-off two-run home run for the beleaguered Yankee third baseman. And the Yankees win four to three. win this one four to three the bat flies up the monkey jumps off and he has himself a game winner that is a rod's fifth career walk-off home run you know him as well as anybody this has to feel good for him it, he, he says it doesn't really bother him it bothers him he's he's human like everybody else and I couldn't be more happy for him he deserves it and I said last night I believe in this guy and you can't hold a great player like this down long and Bobby Cox the other side of the exhilaration at home plate and a jumping band of Yankees. They beat the Braves two games to one. They beat them four to three today in 12 innings. A great game on a Wednesday afternoon at the stadium. We come back to try to make sense of it all.